for listening to this sermon. If you could please read Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. We're going to be looking at identity crisis. Identity crisis. The Pharisee in Jesus' parable was a religious workaholic. He was always at hard at work to earn an identity. The identity of being righteous. To achieve this identity involved a significant amount of effort, fasting twice every week and giving away 10% of everything that he had. He was always preoccupied with the task of getting the credit he felt he deserved. And so when he entered the temple, he thanked God in ways that would gain attention for himself. Sadly for him, his identity as a righteous person didn't last. Every Monday, last week's identity of being a good person passed and he had to start the process all over again. Trying yet again to earn his righteous status through yet another week of fasting, through yet another week of tithing and trying to hide his true self, a sinner, from other people. Today, today I'm going to offer you and that Pharisee something more valuable than a diamond. And just think what would happen if I gave you a literal diamond. A flawless diamond, in fact. If I gave you a flawless diamond, you'd no longer need to work. You could rest knowing the value of that diamond will meet all your needs. Even better, this diamond would last. Toasters, light bulbs and computers break and constantly need to be replaced. However, diamonds are forever. They do not lose their value with time. And when you wear a diamond, it doesn't matter if you're still wearing your pyjamas and haven't combed your hair. When you're wearing a diamond, preoccupation with your wrinkles and grey hair ends and preoccupation with something flawless begins. So what is this spiritual diamond? What is the thing that will allow us to rest rather than constantly needing to work? What is the priceless gift that Jesus offers us that lasts forever? What is this thing that will take our eyes from ourselves and point us to something flawless? This thing is the new identity that you have or can have through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ. In Christ, you can have an identity that you can rest in, an identity that lasts, and an identity that leads to God's praise. An identity you can rest in, an identity that lasts, and an identity that leads to God's praise. So firstly, an identity you can rest in. Now the Pharisee in Jesus' story probably felt left that temple feeling pretty good. He felt proud that he was better than the other tax collectors. He'd achieved his weekly targets of tithing and fasting twice a week. He'd spent his time only focusing on the good things about him. He left knowing other people in the temple were impressed. Yes, most other people would describe such pride as ugly. But let's be honest, when you're feeling proud of yourself, it feels great. However, it's worth asking two questions. Would these feelings last until tomorrow? Would the Pharisee be able to rest the next day? What would happen if the Pharisee didn't, didn't fast twice next week? Would people still consider him good and religious? What would happen to his righteous status if he wasn't seen donating 10% of his wage next week? Had his 10% last week been enough? What would happen if the truth about his unrighteous self was found out? Would people still describe him as righteous? if they knew the real him. The Pharisee would have left that temple 
knowing that he'd have to be back the next day. Back in the temple in order to earn his good reputation all over again. While con whilst continuing to expend great effort to hide the truth about himself. Sins, flaws, failures, all of these take a great deal of effort to hide. But how did the tax collector leave the temple? Verse 14. I tell you that this man, Jesus said, rather than the other, went home justified before God. The tax collector could go home and rest. Why? Because his right standing before God had been given to him. It did not need to be earned. The tax collector could rest knowing God knew the worst about him already. He didn't need to hide it. The tax collector could rest knowing God had fully forgiven him of all his sins. The tax collector could rest having been fully made right with God already. The tax collector could rest whereas the Pharisee was always working, always at work trying to earn what God was offering him for free. So are you resting or are you working? And I don't mean physical work that you go to. Are you always at work trying to hide the worst about yourself? Or can you be honest about yourself because you're resting in Christ's forgiveness? Are you always doing stuff to earn God's acceptance? Or can you rest knowing that through faith in Jesus, God has accepted you already? Do you spend your time doing stuff to feel some sense that you are a good person? Or can you rest knowing that Jesus has already done enough? The message of Jesus is that he did everything needed to make you right with God. If you are a believer. If you are a believer, Jesus did everything he needed to make you right with God. Jesus lived the perfect life in order to earn a right standing with God for us. Jesus died on a cross so that you and I could be perfectly forgiven. In the most simple way, the prayer, God have mercy on me, a sinner, is all you need to be right with God. No need to work for it or earn it. Through faith in Jesus, God offers you it for free. In Christ, you can have an identity that you can rest in, and you can have an identity that lasts. I'm going to retell Jesus' parable, but this time I'm going to tell it with a twist. It's a twist to make a point that the Bible makes in other places. So it's my twist, it's not the Bible's twist. I have to admit, I'm adding the twist in myself but I'm using it to doing it to make a point that the Bible makes in other places. Okay, I hope you understand that. So here we go. Two men went up to the temple to pray. Both were Pharisees. The first Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers. I fast twice a week and give away 10% of all I get. Feeling rather good about himself, the first Pharisee sat down. After this, the second Pharisee stood up and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, and even like this other Pharisee. I fast four times a week, and give away 20% of all I get. How did the first Pharisee feel upon leaving the temple that day? Devastated. Why? Because he'd been exposed to somebody more righteous than himself. Feelings of being a somebody, somebody righteous, somebody good, somebody important. 
feelings of being a somebody only last as long and until you meet somebody greater than yourself. For example, when you get a pat on the back at work, you feel great. But when somebody else is praised more, this feeling fades and you begin to feel jealous. You feel content with your life most days, but when you compare yourself to some, other, some of your other high achieving family members, you feel inferior. You feel like you're a good person for a while because you do this and you do that. But as soon as you meet somebody who does this, that and the other, you become worried that you might not be good enough. Feelings of being a somebody only last until you meet somebody greater. And even if you are the most good, moral and kind person in the world, one day you're going to meet with God. What will happen at that moment? What will happen when you meet God face to face? All the, righteous you fe all the righteousness you feel you've earned will disappear. Why? Because God is perfect and you and I are not. Feelings of being a somebody only last until you meet somebody greater. That's the bad news. Now here's the good news. In the book of Romans, a man named Paul writes the following words. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. The gospel, the good news about Jesus, is all about God offering us a righteousness that lasts. This includes lasting acceptance with God. This includes permanent status as God's child. Always welcome to come to God in prayer. Forever right with God in every way. The good news about Jesus, God's son, is that God offers you and I a righteousness that lasts. In other words, it doesn't disappear the moment you feel, you, the moment that you fail or the moment you need, or the moment you meet somebody better. In Christ, you can have an identity that you can rest in, and you can have an identity that lasts, as well as, well as having an identity that leads to God's praise. The Pharisee in Jesus' story began his prayer with praise to God. However, his prayer actually showed that he was more preoccupied with himself. Verses 11 and 12. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. The Pharisee was preoccupied with issues surrounding his own identity, wanting to establish himself as a good, pious Pharisee who was highly esteemed by other people. His proud prayer was one manifestation of his preoccupation, a preoccupation that took his eyes from God as he focused on himself. I can't help but imagine that this preoccupation would have shown itself in other ways ways that you can probably relate to. If he opened his eyes from praying and saw another Pharisee receiving a pat on the back, would he not have felt jealous? If another Pharisee boasted of being more sacrificial than him, would he not have felt inadequate in some way? If, during his two-day fast, he stuffed his face with a Big Mac at one minute to midnight, He'd probably be kicking himself in frustration. He'd broken his fast. He'd failed to keep his own standards of righteousness, let alone God's. If he left the temple and no one made eye contact, would he not have felt angry at being overlooked? If one week he did rob, commit adultery or do something else evil, would he ever be able to escape the shame? Pride jealousy, anger, a sense of inadequacy, 
self-directed frustration, inescapable shame. How can we escape from being preoccupied with these feelings? Something is wrong, but what is the cure? Well, you'll almost certainly have noticed that British people are always preoccupied with the weather. When it's too warm, we're preoccupied with trying to cool down. When it's too cold, we're preoccupied with trying to stay warm. And in both situations, we complain. It's always either too hot or too cold. In much the same way, those with too high a self-esteem those with too high a self-esteem are always complaining that they deserve better. And they're always getting angry when other people achieve more. Those that, that psychologists would describe as esteeming themselves less, having a, less, uh, having a low self-esteem, well, they might complain in other ways. Feeling frustrated with themselves, feeling a sense of inadequacy when they compare themselves with others. Now back to the weather analogy. On the rare day that the temperature is just right, British people just get on enjoying the day, no longer complaining, no longer preoccupied with the weather anymore. In, other, in much the same way, when we've been made right with God through faith in Jesus, when we know that we're accepted by him, we no longer feel the need to pre be preoccupied with ourselves. No need to complain that we deserve better. We know we're sinners who deserve nothing. No need to feel frustrated with ourselves or inadequate. The most important person in the world has demonstrated to us his love, despite knowing the worst about us already. You see, when we truly appreciate our identity in Christ, we stop being preoccupied with ourselves. And even more importantly, we start praising someone else. Take the Apostle Paul, for example, someone who had previously gained the esteem that came from being a prominent Pharisee. When he came to faith, was he still preoccupied with his identity in the eyes of other people? Did feelings of pride and jealousy still fill his life? Paul, the previously, uh, previously self-righteous man, writes these words. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Paul considered the gains of a worldly reputation as being worth nothing. Paul regarded his achievements as a good person as being like garbage. Why? Because he truly appreciated the value of his new God-given identity, something that was worth so much more. In the book of Galatians, Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The night life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul describes his old life as being crucified, literally dead and unimportant to him. The jealousy of other people achieving, the anger he felt if he was overlooked, the effort he expended to maintain his reputation in the eyes of others, all of this suddenly became meaningless and valueless. Why? Because he knew the Son of God loved him and gave himself for him. And so, rather than being preoccupied with himself, his own standards, his own reputation, his own goals that he wanted to achieve, 
rather than being preoccupied with himself, Paul became preoccupied with God's praise instead. The only way you or I will make this same change is if we make the Pharisee to tax collector change. Looking to God for our new identity as forgiven, accepted, loved children of God. When you have this identity, why get jealous of others? Why get angry because you feel you've been overlooked? Why expend so much effort trying to hide the worst about yourself? Why point people to yourself when you could be pointing them to God? When you truly appreciate your identity in Christ, you'll stop loving or hating yourself and you'll start loving someone else. As it says in the book of Peter, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Read those words in 1 Peter 2 chapter 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 and then keep reading and you'll discover just how wonderful our identity in Christ is. 1 Peter ch chapter 2 verses 9 onwards.